morning, everybody. The time is 5.30 a.m. here in Connecticut. So we have a SB220 in for repair. Belong to the customer's family member, so it has some sentimental value. So I am going to disconnect the secondaries from the plate supply and replace this cap so I can turn it on and check the transformers especially the filament transformer the reason why I'm going to disconnect the wires from looks like an early hardbox board is this is really old so I'm going to replace it it also has I believe a hardbox yeah metering board says RM220 old old I'm going to replace it with the modern one band switch is good air variable cap on the plate side Looks good. Fan is okay. Meters checked out okay. I'm gonna ground the grids. Wire broke off here, but I'm gonna go through it. Do everything I normally do. I have to fix the leads over here. Look, someone just put a new cord on, and they did a horrible soldering job. And this is a problem here. See, these leads could touch, and then boom, you have a short. Sorry about that. The battery died in the camera. Okay, so it's also getting a new soft key board that's a very early one and uh, SO239 is checked out okay so oh big news there's my coffee uh, caps came for the 160 through 15 meter amp so next week I will pull the capacitor assembly in here and I'll put all the diodes and resistors across them and uh, all the jumper leads, all that, get that done. And I'll be back on the multiband amp. I want to get that done. There was a strike with the Canadian Post Office. Package got put aside in some warehouse, Jim said. And it just took forever for them to get here. So two of them had little dings in them. And I wasn't I wasn't going to take a chance at that voltage. So um, he sent me three replacements with some more high voltage fuses. So I am so excited on that. Okay, so... I'm going to get to work on this. I need to assemble the first two Harbach boards and get those in and start doing everything else. It's a lot of work, so stay tuned. So remember, I'm what they call a professional, so do not try this at home. I can't say that strong enough, okay? So I removed that medical grade tape off the secondary leads. I put a piece of heat shrink on the end of each lead. So they don't touch the chassis. Remember, this is high voltage. This will kill you. It won't give you a second chance. So I'm going to have to fix that wiring after. Uh, something happened. It arced at some point, And you can see it on the medical grade tape. So just it's not rated for that use. Just don't use it. Okay. So put the temporary capacitor in. I'll end up using that cap, but uh, just tagged in there temporarily in case it didn't work out right. I checked the coil resistance to make sure the coil wasn't open first. That's one of the things I always check when I get one in. So, okay, so I'm going to turn it on. So I'll leave it on for five minutes or so. If there was a problem, I'd see it pretty quick. Transformer would get really hot, plus I would not have the relay engaging. So she is good. Transformer, I wish you with the transformer. I'll also take that unplugged. I'll take a reading between each secondary lead and the core, you know, of the part of the core or chassis where there's no paint. So I can get a good reading. If there was a problem inside the transformer, a short in the secondary to the, uh, like one of the windings to the um, core of the transformer, I'd see resistance should be really high in the mega ohms um, if it's okay so I've yet to see a bad plate transformer you know unless the amp came from uh, someone that's not a licensed ham radio operator that used it somewhere they shouldn't have that was abusing it then that's a different story so by doing the self bias modification don't have to worry about cooking the, uh, the film a transformer it'll be uh, protected and you know, you don't have to worry about damaging the winding. So, all modern amplifiers nowadays, like this, they don't, none of them use a 
they just don't use a forced bias setup. They're all self-bias. So I'm just bringing it up to today's standards along with grounding grids and meter protection on the hardbox board. So once you have the meter protection, you'll never have to worry about taking out the plate current meter. So these are just really important things. And then the series glitch resistor will limit fault current if something does start to arc. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, for the output network or something like a tube or a variable cap on the plate side or whatever, anything in the RF compartment that has B positive on it. Okay, so I'm going to get to work, let it run for a bit, and uh, see you guys soon. Stay tuned. To show the filter cap board kit before I put the side cover on. So I put heat shrink over the wires. Everything's all soldered nice, nice by me. You B negative wire, silver plated stranded center conductor with a Teflon jacket. New wire for the B positive. New Harbach metering board. Series glitch resistor. Plenty of room around it for airflow. Some people put it on the board, which doesn't make sense to me. So, remove the outer nuts, tighten the inner nuts. They were, they were like wicked loose. They were like five or six, I don't know, maybe three turns, two, two or three turns, I would say. Loose, so they're snugged up with a wrench and carefully and put the outer nuts back on and they're also snugged up. So, I always spread the clips on the meter lamp assemblies before I reinstall them and I put a teeny weeny bit of silicone on there to help hold them in place just so they don't pop out. You wouldn't want them to pop out and hit a high voltage point. I do that when I change the bulbs. Okay, so clean the input rotary switch with the oxy gold. I always take that nut off and I tighten the inner nut because it's almost always loose. That's for the feed through for the B positive that goes into the tube compartment. So I'm going to put the side cover on and then I'll show you the bottom and the top. So here's the bottom. I'll show you everything I did. Fixed the leads on the bypass caps. Resoldered the two wires, the line wires right here. The new electrolytic in. Grounded the grids with strap right to the metal. Put the new hard box soft keyboard in. Check the SO239s, they're good. Replace the strap within this sleeve material. It was broken off down here and also ended up breaking off up here when I touched it. So that's good. Clean the contacts with the oxy gold. Guy tried to do the bias mod but did not do it correctly. Still had the 110, 120 volt DC, whatever, connected to the normally closed connection. So I removed that and resoldered the the lead and the resistor end to the uh, normally open contact. What else did I do? There's a solder right there. So I'm going to go look it all over before I fire it up, and that'll be after the next video. So, um, what else? Place the jumper lead right here, fix the solder joint right there. Rezip tied everything, nice, nice. Added a new lead for the positive side of the TR slash bias relay. It's a silver plated stranded center conductor with Teflon dielectric. So I have a ton of it. And the mounting zip tie block so it's not flapping around. Comes around. Connects over here to the strip. Okay, so I'll show you the bot uh, the top. Oh, one thing else. I got rid of those wire nuts and soldered and heat shrunk the fan wires. So, I'll show you the top. Be right back. Okay, so these are the two dummy tubes I use for making the parasitic suppressors. I mean, for installing them, I make them outside the amp and then I in install them. So new solder tabs. I always angle the solder tab over this way more, so if a tube ends up being a little bit taller or something, it'll give me wiggle room so the parasitic suppressor end will reach. 
brand new plate blocking cap. Clean the band switch with deoxygold and the input rotary switch with deoxygold. Okay, so now I'm going to test it and see what happens. So stay tuned. So clean the multimeter switch with the oxygold. Okay, so he's back with the SB220. It's on 80 meters, 2500 watt slug. Key it, audio hello, audio hello, hello. About 1250 right there. Audio hello, 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 2500 watt slug. Audio hello, hello, hello. Audio hello, 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 hello. Audio hello, hello, hello. Audio. Lower voltage setting. Bleeding down. Audio hello, hello, hello. Less power, lower voltage setting. About, I don't know, 80 watts or so. Tit, 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 tit. Hey, so it's working as it should. If you need any app repaired, feel free to give me a call, 203-892-4119, that's 203-892-4119, websites are amprepairguy.com, also harbachelectronics.com, please like, share, and subscribe, have a great night.